My name is Matt, I'm with 12 Volt Fab. I'm gonna talk to you about GM metric calipers today. The bold, the beautiful, and the rebuildable. Uh, let me hit you with a few glamour shots as we work our way to the bench with some broken parts, and stay tuned. If you're still with me, that means you either really like GM metric calipers, I understand you, you're my people, you have real problems and think I can help you with them, which just again puts you in a very dangerous spot, or you just want to learn more about these guys. These are the rear brakes off my Buick. I did a swap a couple years ago to GM metric calipers, uh, code name D154 if we want to talk in code names. Great caliper, I love it. This is actually the e-brake version, so it's got a bracketry that goes on the back that doesn't work well, but I'm just kidding, they actually work okay. They just need adjusted, it's one of the things. It's a secret dark art, and I'm only just starting to learn how to do it. But they actually work decently for what we ask of them. The issue isn't actually the design. The issue I have is some of how they've been implemented over the years, and the rebuilds that are out there are just awful. The biggest problem I see are when they get rebuilt, they kind of just throw all the parts in a big bin, like this, and those parts aren't always good. This one has been in here for two years and it's all chewed up around the edge. The car doesn't even have two tanks worth of gas through it, and it still looks like this, so my actual guess is it looked awful when they put it in there. Once you get rust, or heavy pitting, or any of that garbage inside there, it starts leaking past that seal. And that's how I actually realized I had a problem on this car, was when I was braking, I could just feel my pedal slowly go all the way to the floor. I knew something was wrong. I've done some swapping here. This is the fully assembled one off the car. Being that this is a real GM metric caliper that's just been rebuilt, albeit terribly, it uses metric 10 1.5 threads. You get into some weird stuff when you get in the aftermarket calipers, Aftermarket, aftermarket, the aftermarket calipers will probably be like a 1 8 MPT. I don't understand why they use pipe threads, but if you get into a Willwood or like an AFCO caliper, that's generally what they use to hook up. The real GM calipers are M10 1.5. Speedway and maybe CPP, a few different companies that make aftermarket ones, give them standard threads. Uh, I know that you could swap these onto the older vehicles from the pre-metric era, but I, I've never really quite found a use for intentionally buying the standard thread version. Okay, I like to plumb brakes with braided line, that's just my thing. This is just 3AN, off the shelf, super cheap. I've got it in here with an adapter for 3AN to M10 1.5, just using a little copper washer smashed in there. I've since changed how I do this. I don't like relying on that point as the connection. Nowadays, whenever I plumb these out, I will use these guys. It's a 7 16 or M10 adapter, and it allows you just to use a straight, or I guess if you needed a 90 degree, you could throw it on there as well. One thing I will say about banjo bolts and 3AN dash line and all that fun stuff, if you're connecting braided line, you need to always rely on the flare inside there to make your seal. You can't throw Teflon tape around there in thread locker and use that as your seal. I will say that if you coat a little bit of thread locker or thread sealant right here and then put these together, you're gonna have, in my opinion, a safer, better time. I'm a big proponent of going back and tightening bolts down on cars after they've been driven for like a, a couple drives or a month, but with brakes it's kind of a weird thing that we don't do. If it's got that extra layer of thread locker in there, it just makes me sleep better at night knowing that vibration or maybe something putting a little bit of extra tension on it that it shouldn't have isn't going to twist this thing loose as easily and we go from there. Again, don't rely on that as your actual seal, that's, that's not what it's for but it helps it lock it down. I like doing it. Another one thing I want to show you are these little guys. 
So the brake bolt on the right is actually what is specced from GM. It's just an off-the-shelf banjo bolt, nothing crazy. The one on the left, though, is going to get you furred guys all riled up. It's actually off of an SN95 Mustang. They have some really thick couplers at the end of their brake hoses that once you get a copper washer on both sides, taking up about a sixteenth inch of a space, you don't always have, that'd be about there, you don't have any threads that are actually going into the caliper. I like to use the longer bolts. I feel safer. They've got more threads in their actual caliper. I'll just throw the link at the bottom of it. Bring in the old junker over here again. I want you to see the sealing surface of those banjo bolts. Ours has a whole bunch of goop in it and rust and gross fun stuff. It would seal really good is what I'm trying to say. Copper washers are the standard. Aftermarket calipers sometimes come with aluminum and every once in a while neither of those works for me. The last option I've ever found is called Stato Seal. It looks basically like a steel washer with a black rubber o-ring embedded on the edge. They'll seal anything. That's not an excuse to try to make a normal washer seal on here. They're kind of expensive and hard to find, but they work really well for sealing old junk like what we have floating around this shop. The next thing I want to go over are the pins that actually hold these calipers in. These have given me a lot of grief on old cars that are original with them, not so much on cars that have been swapped, but these pins slide in there just like that and hold it so the caliper can actually float back and forth on these guys. These are just awful. I don't know who at GM thought using a 3 8 Allen on something that would be later coined the GM metric caliper was a good idea, but here we are. If any of you think it's slightly ironic that they call this the GM metric caliper and it uses standard hardware to put it together, go ahead and like and subscribe. That's just a shameless self-promotion for this video, but it's a shameless world out there, folks, so buckle up. When these start to fail, you can see that they're just out of alignment. I'm not exactly sure how that happened on mine, but we can know for a fact that these guys are just hammered. Just, just, just garbage. They can be replaced. You can swap in fresh ones. Uh, but again, like this caliper is just going in the trash, so I'm not too worried about it. But you can buy a rebuild kit to make these actually stay. And that's another thing I've seen from mainly Midwest cars, is if you're trying to break these loose, and you've already stripped out this guy, that's going to happen. You're going to strip that out. Uh, and you've already hammered on a socket trying to get it on there. That One of the easier things you can do is coat the whole thing with penetrating lube. But... Start banging on the actual caliper, trying to move it around. As years of rust and corrosion get in here, sometimes they actually get seized here and back in here. They're not necessarily stuck on the threads here. So just moving these calipers around will f free them up just enough so you can actually get this in there and take it off without destroying everything. Let's look closer at this piston. So this one doesn't look too bad. I'm confused at what all that scarring is. Again, remember this is a rebuilt unit, so it may have not actually happened to mine. It may have happened when whatever housing that was assembled with a decade ago. But these are the kind of things that will start causing problems, in my opinion, with the seals. Now remember I told you I took the good one out, so this one is still kind of surprising that there's this kind of wear on a piston that hasn't failed yet. You have to get it right in just the light to see that there's rust pitting all in there. I've pulled some of these apart that it is just covered with rust, particularly on the lowest point of the caliper. So if it was sitting in there, it would be right here. Water got in the brake lines, it came to the lowest point in the system, and then it rusts out the piston. It happens. And this is where I think aftermarket calipers shine. I've switched it over to the years rather than going through all of, all of this baggage to just buying aftermarket calipers. AFCO makes some really reasonably priced cast iron stainless steel piston units that work wonderful. They're like 69 bucks. 
They don't require a core. They look good. They work great. They've got a nice shiny zinc coating on them. They're wonderful for like a budget rebuild. Willwood AFCO makes some really good fully aluminum stainless steel piston calipers. Those are actually my favorite to use, but they're a little bit more, a little bit more pricey. Still really good quality units, and I like to use them when I can. That's actually what's going on this car right now. I'll, uh, we'll head down there and we'll check it out here in a little bit. Let's go downstairs on the floor and take a look at the Willwood calipers that are replacing these. With the power of movie magic, we can do that in an instant. So I didn't actually say the movie magic was going to be good, but here it is. I also like to say the difference between your 20s and 30s is figuring out which knee is going to be the bad knee. And I, have, I figured it out. Earlier I mentioned my secret family bean recipe for the best brake system you can do on like a terrible budget. It actually consists of the mid-size GM calipers on the rear, the full-size GM metric calipers on the front, a one-inch master cylinder bore, and here's where things get, get really get you riled up. If you wanted more of a manual brake feeling car, I'd go with a seven inch booster. If you wanted more of a modern feel of highly boosted, I'd go with a dual diaphragm nine inch. But this has never let me down on this setup over the years. So take that with a grain of salt. I know one thing or two about something. Okay. Here we've got a Willwood aftermarket caliper. It says racing which none of them say that online and they always just keep showing up with that racing logo on there. Not exactly sure what that has to do or if Willwood's using a photo from the 80s. There's our old caliper next to it. Again, you can see they look way bigger, but they weigh almost nothing. Remember, this is forged aluminum. So even though it looks larger than that one, it weighs less with the brake pads installed than that one does just sitting unloaded. Another thing of note is these pins. If you get one of the new calipers from let's say Willwood, and you go to try to put your factory GM style pins in it, you can see that, come on, there we go. You can see that we're gonna have a bad time here. They still have that rubber seal in there not on the front though, but they still have it on the rear, but this diameter isn't right. You can buy these with a spacer installed on here. I like just to up the game with purpose-built caliper bolts. You can get them from Summit, Jegs, Willwood, Amazon, eBay, all the fun places. But when you install these guys, you can see that it's a tight fit in there. And I've found time and time again that people will forget about this or not know about it and will find out when they don't have the right hardware for these that you needed this one, not this one. They're the same length, nothing crazy happening there. Just as a tidbit, don't find out the hard way. Here's what I was mentioning earlier, but I'm not really sure why, but on aftermarket calendars, it's a thing where they install 8th inch NPT threads. Yeah, like the pipe thread. I don't understand why they keep doing it. I've just gotten used to it over the years and all of the, we've all just laughed and tried to figure it out. If you know why this happens and why this is a thing, please comment below. I've been trying to figure it out. No one will give a good answer, but whatever. As you can see, I've done some thread sealant on here. There's a tiny little bit chilling in there just to lock down my AN cable like we talked about. Another thing I like to do is if we look up in here, we've got a loop that will take off some of our tension from our fittings. So as the axle goes up and down and we attach it actually, it'll be able to soak up some of that vibration. And then finally, we can see it. That's a little secret I like to use. This car is still getting undercoated, so it's red right now for primer, but that is a panel mount 3A on one side to inverted brake fitting on the other. It makes running rear brakes super clean and easy. If you ever need to swap anything out, you can just undo the line right there. The next part of this uh, terrible, terrible thing I've gotten involved with 
is to take this guy, make it go on there through some sort of wizardry bracket, and then actually stop the car. So stay tuned for all that. Thank you.